सर्वधर्मस्थापकस्वधर्मस्वूपक आचार्याण महाचार्यो रामकृष्णाय ते नम वी आर स्टडिंग श्रीराम कृष्ण द लीला प्रसंग श्रीराम कृष्ण द ग्रेट मास्टर फिफ्थ पार्ट द मास्टर इन डिवाइन मूड एंड नरेंद्र नाथ एक्चुअली द बुक as written by sadhan swami ji has ended yesterday he wrote three small articles in the bengali magazine udboda in which the whole book was seriously published first but these three were not published in the book during his lifetime and later on they have been added as appendix in the original bengali book in english they have been included in chapter 13 now let me discuss a small point here why some people ask to sardan swamiji himself why you left the book unfinished why you have not described the end to which he replied there is no end to the divine play called shri ramakrishna so we may say this is the gyanin's reply and another question was asked why you have not described the days of the cancer to which he replied i cannot bring that to my mind again because he has said that i have not written anything which i have not experienced and to experience that master's almost slow crucifixion is beyond the devotees so you may say that this is the reply of the bhakta so we may add a third thing that though later on it became a biography <laughs> but in the beginning he had no idea of writing a biography of shri ram and we have seen this in the guru va purvarda nattar that he wanted to present a few pictures of shri ram krishna's personality so that the world understands him and understands him as the universal teacher that was the guru va and then he found thakur has given him more time more inclination more opportunity so he went on right like like this actually when the holy mother passed away in 1920 and swami brahmanand ji passed away in 1922 he said now i don't get any inner inspiration to do this work so these are the circumstances now these three pieces are the only available to us from sardanjee's pen if you go to the other chronicle called the gospel of shri ram krishna we will see that master mahashay has added a few more dates of the cancer leela but he has also not taken it till the end but he had noted down in his diary as per his permanent habit and we get a book the last days of shri ram krishna by 
Swami Prabhananda Ji. It is, it is not the equivalent of the gospel. Because in the gospel, Master has, Master Master has exercised his phenomenal memory. But the notes which he took during visits to Sri Ramakrishna have been put with a possible little explanation in the last days. So we don't have any other chronicle. Even Master Mahasaya could not bring himself to write down the details of the last few days. Okay. Now, as far as this appendix is concerned, the first appendix, according to Bengali, is named simply as Kashi Purer Uddhanavati. Literally, if you take it to English, it will mean the garden house of Kashipur. But according to the content therein, the English translators have made it the master in the garden house of Kashipur. Because he arrived there, that has been described very nicely. So let us now read. And in English, Four para headings have been inserted which are not in the Bengali. So it is something useful. And the first para says Kashipur. The Kashipur garden house is situated on the broad road that runs through the north of Calcutta and joins the Bagbazar quarter with Baranagar, three miles from the city. So, Bagbazar is in Calcutta and Baranagar is three miles from the city. And the main road joining this, on that road, this Kashipur, you may say suburb, is situated. Kashipur Garden House is situated. On both sides of that road, from the north of Bagbazar, because we are going north of the, no. From Calcutta, we are going north. From Calcutta, we are going north. We have to proceed much north to get at Dakshineshwar. So, it is between Maranagar and Dakshineshwar. So, we start from, from Bhagavadar. Maranagar, then Dakshineshwar. So, we start from Bhagavadar. On both sides of that road, from the north of Bhagavadar bridge, to the crossroads, a little to the south of that garden, are seen the cottages. He has described it in great detail and it has become extremely useful when the premises were ta taken by Ramakrishna Mission and they could restore the original scene because it has been described by Sardarji. On book. To the south of that garden are seen the cottages of poor laborers. That landscape has changed now. And small shops full of articles necessary for their daily life. For the daily lives of those laborers. There are a few brick works interspersed among them. Some brick houses. A few jute mills, the iron factory of the Dost Company, the firm of Rally Brothers Limited. Rally Brothers are famous for the fine cloth they used to make. One or two gardens of dwelling houses, and the police station and the fire brigade station situated to the southwest of the Kashipur crossroads. South, West, Southwest, South, oh, South, uh -huh. Southwest, okay. And not far to the west of it stands the famous temple of Sri 
Sarva Mangala Devi, as if to bear witness to the terrible differences in human condition between the poor and the rich. So, big houses on this side and poor houses on this side in between Sarva Mangala Devi. Again, as the Sialda railway station was improved and extended, many tin roof bones, etc., have now been built in Sardanji's time, have now been built on the said road and have destroyed the little beauty it had a few years ago. Although this ancient road is thus not pleasing to the eye of a poet, or an artist, it has some value in the eye of the historian. He is describing all the associations because all the devotees of Ram Krishna have great sentiment towards that. For Nawab Sirat, Sirajuddhaula, it is said, advanced along this road and occupied the British fort of Govindapur and a palace of the black hearted traitor Nawab Mirzapur. That is, those who study history, they know that black-hearted traitor, Nawab Mirzapur. That means traitor to the other Nawab. One stood on this part of the road a little more than half a mile from Bagbazar. This portion of the road from Bagbazar to the crossroads of Kashipur is not beautiful. But the part of it extending from there to the Baranagar Bazaar cannot be called unattractive. Going a little further north from the said crossroads, one meets with the southern part of the, again that Moti has come, Moti Pond and opposite to it on the eastern side of the road with the beautiful residential home of our well-known friend the late Mahima Charan Chakravarti, who has been described in the last chapter. The railway company has now purchased the greater part of the garden surrounding the home, surrounding this house, that is uh, Mahima's house, and extended a branch of the railway to the bank of the Ganga through it, which has robbed the house of all its former beauty, Mahima's house. Going a little further north from there, one sees on one's left the northern side of the Moti Jail and opposite to it, on the eastern side of the road, the high wall and the iron gate of the Kashipur garden. So in this way, we arrived at the Kashipur garden. There is a high compound wall and the iron gate. A few beautiful garden houses on the bank of the Ganga were situated on the road lying to the west of the Mati Jail. Of these again, the best and the most beautiful was Moti Lal Shields Garden. From this the name Moti like might have come, Moti Lal. Shields Garden, not Matilana, which now on coming under the occupation of the Calcutta Electric Company has been shorn of all its previous serene beauty, yielding place to the din and bustle of industry. A broken residential house of the Basaks was situated on the Ganga to the north of this garden, on the Ganga as rows of tamarisk trees stood on both sides of the path leading from the road to the broken house, a wonderful beauty and sound then always soothed the eyes and ears of visitors. The rustle or bustle of the tamarisk tree is producing that sound.
दिव्य ध्वनि दिव्य ध्वनि इट इज नॉट डिस्क्राइब वेड साउंड इज वंडरफुल ब्यूटी एंड साउंड देन ऑलवेज सूख दे आईज एंड इयर्स ऑफ विजिटर्स वेल बिकॉज दे सराउंडिंग आर नॉट गुड बट देर आफ्टर कमिंग देर इट वॉज नाइस वाई वी वेर स्टेइंग विद द मास्टर एट द गार्डन हाउस ऑफ काशीपुर we very often went to the shields garden for a bath in the ganga <coughs> so it is the ganga sound and as the master liked gulchi flowers they are not translated in english the equivalent english name we have to find out gulchi flowers we plucked them from the big trees growing by the side of the ghat and presented them to the master very often again we went through the path adorned with those beautiful rows of tamarisk trees and reaching the basaks and inhabited garden house sat down on the bank of the ganga a little to the north of the garden lay the spacious bathing ghat belonging to the late लेट प्राणनाथ चौधरी प्राणन थियर इन स्पेलिंग सम ओहो वन एम एज बिकम एच वाय मिस्टेक मिस्प्रिंट इट इज टाइपोग्राफिकल एर प्राणनाथ चौधरी एंड टू द नॉर्थ ऑफ इट अगेन स्टूड द ब्यूटिफुल टेम्पल ऑफ श्री गोपाल belong into rani karta and wife of the famous lala babu a little has to be told about this lala babu or kaat rani karta this uh, somebody else who had many wives and he was giving up one by one that is what this uh, lala babu's wife told him and you are attached he said that that is not the way to give up she said you only talk he said see what is the way to give up and with the towel on his shoulder he walked away that is all about and now there are college in his name and there is lala babu's ashram near belur mart and this is on the opposite side of velur mat so that was lala babu and katteni is his wife and because they were rich so she is rani katteni and she established those temples the famous lala babu we sometimes went to that place too for taking bath in the ganga and paying our obeisances to shri gopal the late gopal chandra ghosh son in law of rani kattayani was the owner of the garden house of kashipur so that is the association the devotees hired it from him at the monthly rent of 80 rupees at first for 6 months and then executed a bond for another 3 months Surendranath Mitra of Shimla Calcutta 
a great devotee of the master signed the bond and paid the whole rent. The Thakur himself had told him, you pay the rent. In the garden house of Kashipur. So we have come up to the garden. Now let us see the garden house. The Kashipur garden was very beautiful, though not big. It had an area of about 14 bigas. That is roughly equivalent to four, four and a half, a little more than four and a half acres. A little more than four and a half acres. That is the size of that garden. That quadrangular piece of land was a little longer from east to west. That side, east to west. Then from north to south and was surrounded by high walls. A row of three or four rooms, almost touching the middle of the northern compound wall. Northern compound wall, three or four rooms. Were meant for the kitchen and the stores. Facing those rooms and on the other side of the garden, there was a two-story residential house. It had two rooms upstairs and four downstairs. Of the room on the ground floor, the one in the middle was a spacious hall. To the north of it, there were two small rooms side by side. From the western one of these rooms, a flight of wooden steps led to the first floor. The, and the eastern one was allotted to the Holy Mother. So Holy Mother had a room on the ground floor. The above mentioned hall extending from east to west and the room to the south of it which had a veranda to the east, were used by the devotees for sitting and sleeping in that hall and the veranda, one room and the veranda. Above the hall on the ground floor, there was a square hall of equal dimension on the first floor. It was here that the master lived. Master lived in the hall on the first floor. To the south of it, there was a small portion of the terrace of the ground floor surrounded by walls, but open above. Here the master sometimes strolled and sat. And to the north of it, there were the roof of the room through which the steps led upstairs and a small square room equal in size to and situated above the room fixed for the Holy Mother. So, on the first floor, there is a room above Holy Mother's room, equal in size. Here, the master used to take his bath, etc. So, that was the adjustments made. It was also used at night by one or two attendants. So, they made a composite use of it. <laughs> on the eastern and the Western side of the residential part of the house were two flights of stairs leading to a leading to the hall on the ground floor. Two staircases leading to the ground floor from above, which was surrounded by a brick-built circular garden path in the southwest corner of the garden. So garden path. In the southwest corner of the garden and joined to its western wall, there was a small room for the gatekeeper and to the north of it was the iron gate. Okay. A semicircular garden path broad enough for carriages went northeast and joined the circular road around the residential house. All this can be seen now. There was a small pool 
to the west of the residential quarters, pond, small pond. Opposite to the western stairs <coughs> leading to the hall and on the other side of the garden path, there was a flight of steps leading down to the said pool. In the northeast corner of the garden, there was a pond four or five times bigger than the said pool, having two or three one-story rooms to the northwest of it. So you can mark the directions or go and visit that place or see the pictures of it available now. Besides, there was a stable in the northwest corner of the garden. To the west of the above mentioned pool and situated side by side, there were two dilapidated brick built rooms for the gardener near the middle of the southern wall of the garden, this side. Okay. Everywhere else in the garden, there were garden where mango, jackfruit, lychee and other fruit bearing trees. The garden paths were adorned with flower plants on both sides. Much of the land near the pool and the pond was used for growing greens and vegetables for the kitchen. Again, spread at intervals among trees, there were lawns covered with green grass, adding much to the beauty of the garden. Uh, third parent, the master came and started training his boy devotees. For that it is used. <coughs> Shampukur was in the city. And there he went to meet the householder devotees. And now this is little away from the city. And the boys had to stay there for serving the master. So master started training them. The master came to this garden on the 11th of December. Yesterday, I think of 13th. It is the date is mentioned. So 11th of December, AD 1885. Penultimate day, he said. So, 12th might be the Sankranti. As the disease gradually worsened during these eight months, and as his tall, strong body was reduced to a mere skeleton, his mind, perfect in self control, increasingly went on disregarding its fury and the pain arising from it. Disease increasing his freedom from the disease increasing. He appeared to all observing eyes to have girded up his loins to complete the work already begun of teaching and training of the order of his devotees. Order of his devotees, that became the Ramakrishna Sangha. By imparting necessary instructions without a break or pause, both individually and collectively to them. The special training for individuals according to his temperament and the general to the group. Moreover, we are constantly witnessing the fulfillment of his prophecy about himself. So often mentioned to the devotees in the Kineshu. He had said on various occasions, before I pass away, I will cast the whole secret to the winds. That is, he will divert my nature as a Devamano, God man, as an avatar. At a handy wage ago, when many came to know my divine glory and whisper about it, this case, my body will cease to be. It will go to pieces by my mother's dispensation. It will be ascertained at that time during my illness, huh? which among the devotees belong to the inner circle and which to the outer. Automatically they will get divided. 
and so on. So only so many talks he has given about his stay in Kashipur. It was here that we could understand the truth of his predictions about Narendra Nath and other devotees, such as Mother has perforce brought you, Naren, down to the world to do her work. You cannot but follow me. Where else will you go? So Narendra complete obedience to the master's will, started his work there. They all, the boy devotees, are like the young ones of the home upper. That right. That rises very high up in the air, where it lays the X in the air. We start falling toward the earth with great accelerated speed. One is afraid that they will all be shattered to pieces when they reach the ground. But that does not happen. Out of the eggs are hatched young ones in the air itself, which are fledged. And before touching the ground, they spread their wings and fly up again into the air to reach their parents who wait for their coming up. There is a beautiful allegory about the disciples, chosen disciples of the incarnation. Who wait for their coming up. Similarly, they, the boy devotees also, will renounce the world and go forward towards God before they are chained to the world. So, instead of getting married, they will go away. Besides, before getting chained to the world, if, though a few of them were married, besides it was here that he molded the life of Narendra Nath, especially, separately, and placed the circle of devotees, particularly the boy devotees, in his, in his charge. When I say circle of devotees, that means the larger Ramakrishna order also had to be directed by Narendra Nath. But the sannyasins were specifically to be in his charge and gave him detailed instruction how to guide them. So, removing others calling Naren to his side used to talk every day for some hours. It needs no mention, therefore, that the work of the master accomplished at Kashipur was fraught with the weightiest significance. So his lila is continuing. The garden house carrying these memories should be acquired by the Ramakrishna mission. It has long since been acquired. A very strong desire rises naturally in the minds of all that the said place where the master accomplished those grave and profound actions of his life may be associated with the Ramakrishna mission to serve as a permanent memorial to those blessed deeds of the Master, so that the generations of human beings might derive pure joy, Shirin, at the holy remembrance. But alas, a very great obstacle to this fulfillment has arisen. The railway company, we are told, is trying to acquire it. It is therefore super place to say that this place of the Master's divine sport will soon assume a different form and be converted perhaps into jute godons or some such ugly object. But if that be the will of providence, what can we, weak mortals, do? Let us therefore helplessly console ourselves with the thought what exists in the hand of providence, mind of providence, unavoidable comes to. But as he has said in the beginning, a very strong desire rises in the minds of God. So this strong desire in the minds of great people like Master's disciples had to come to. And very long back now, I should say. Afterwards, it was acquired by the Ramakrishna mission. And as per these descriptions, things were found and renovated and made like original. Anybody, especially uh, the incident is described in the third section of that uh, appendix on the 1st January of 1886. On that day, approximate visitors 
I can't count lakhs. And the no, this corona has reduced it a little, but otherwise on the main road for about a mile, we used to see the discipline queue entering into. So in the description of the Kashipur house, we come to the second section, second article of chapter 13, the war of service at Kashipur. So that is the main thing here. Master trained them how they live, how they serve the master. So a continuation of the Leela has started. <coughs> Here also, here in the original Bengali, mm, let me see. Ah, here also in the original Bengali, the para headings are not there, but in English, they have provided the para headings. Useful they are. The master's joy at the beauty and spaciousness of the garden. Ah. That is the first point. The master, who has said before, came from Shampukur to the Kachipur garden on the penultimate day of Agrahayan. Inasmuch as custom forbade making a journey to a new place in the month of Posh. So, solar months, Sankranti it ends and the next starts on the next day. Posh starts on the 12th December. So the they came on the 11th or 13th. Penultimate means last day is 12 December. They came on 11th December. 13th day, the post starts. Okay. Sankranti is on the 12th. The residential house in the garden was more spacious and more secluded than the Shampukur house, which was situated on a road filled with throughout the walking hour, waking hours with the din and noise of the people of the city. It was in the city. In whatever direction one might cast one's look in this Kashipur house, one's eyes were soothed with the green leaves of trees, the bright colors of flowers, and the blue and dark blue hues of the new and old grass in the lawns. So, and the grass has blue and dark blue use of the new and old grass in the logs. Although the beauty of this garden compared with the wonderful natural beauty of the Kali temple at Dakshineshwar was not worth mentioning, it appeared to the master to be pleasant after a continuous stay of about four months at Calcutta. As soon as he entered the garden, he felt the cheering effect of the open air <coughs> joyously observing everything around. He slowly proceeded toward the main building. As he entered the spacious room on the first floor chosen for him, he was drawn out by the beauty around and came out to the southern side and taking a stand on the terrace of the first story enjoyed the beauty of the garden for some time. The Holy Mother too, it was evident, was very pleased, seeing that she would not have to live here crypt and cabine as in the Shampukur house, and yet would have the opportunity of serving the Master. It is therefore super place to say, that the joy of the attendants knew no bounds when both of them were so very pleased with the garden house. So their joy is centered in Thakur and Sardamani. And both of them felt very happy, so all the attendant disciples felt happy. Both men and money were necessary for the service of the master, Narendra supplied men, lay devotees the money. Lay devotees means householder devotees. 
Lay in the sense other became monastic. In comparison to that, they are called lay. Actually, we can call them household devotees. A few, lay means non-monastic. A few days passed in removing inconveniences, big and small, that came to the notice of the attendants. Narendra thought over them and easily came to understand. So the center of all arrangement for the devotees and disciples was Narendra Nath. Narendra thought over them and easily came to understand that more men and money would be required now than ever if those who had taken upon themselves voluntarily the charge of the master's service were also to live at that garden house because it is away situated far away from the doctor's houses and clinics. It was evident that, so that they have to go every day and report and come back and bring medicines. Clinic has medicines available. It was evident that unless all houses and clinics were the doctor's work, it was evident that unless all matters were thrashed out duly and steps taken from the beginning, difficulties would naturally crop up in the way of their service to the master. So the Ramakrishna mission, which is serving humanity, the service thing started by serving the master. Malaram, Surendra, Ram, Girish, Mahendra and others who had all along been thinking of the financial side of the matter, found out after due deliberation the ways and means of meeting the expenditure. But as regards the question of men, Narendra himself would have to think it out as before. He would therefore have to spend the greater part of his time at the Kashipur garden. If he did not show the way, many of the young devotees could not do so, lest they should incur the displeasure of their guardians or their studies should suffer. So two obstacles, they were all students, so the studies will suffer, the guardians will object. If Narendra shows the way, then they can follow him. For during the master's stay at Shampukur, they used to go home to take their food and come back to engage themselves in a service which would be impossible for them to do on account of the long distance between Kashipur and Calcutta. Narendra has resolved to stay at the garden house to serve the master and at leisure to prepare for the law examination. He was studying LLV in those days. BL it was called. Narendra was preparing for the law examination BL that year. Although it was absolutely necessary for him to stay in Calcutta for his studies and for looking after the suit pending before the High Court regarding the partition of his ancestral property necessitated by the enmity of his kinsmen. He dismissed that idea completely from his mind in order to serve the Guru. So priorities you see, almost uh, uh, impossible from the so-called worldly point of view, but he refused it and decided that he should bring his law books to the Kashipur garden and read them at leisure, if at all possible. Thus we see that Narendra's desire to prepare for the law examination and also to serve the master was still then firm in his mind. So both things were in his mind, but that as per leisure. Primary this, for having no alternative before him, 
he had decided that he should pass the law examination and by a few, few years hard labor earn money sufficient for bare maintenance of his mother and brothers and having made arrangements for them, he should retire from the world and devote himself entirely to the sadhana of God. That was the thing he had to make. But alas, many of us do make such good results. But how many succeed? Many of us calculate that we might allow ourselves to be carried so far by the currents of worldliness, so far. And then show our inner strength to wearing ground and swimming against them on, on to the safe heaven of righteousness. And start working accordingly. But how many of us can save ourselves from being caught in the whirlpool and succeed in reaching the shore? Narendra was the foremost of the first class spiritual aspirants and received the infinite grace of the master. What about this resolve of his? Is it also destined by coming in collision with the world to be similarly upset and destroyed and assume a different form in future? Be patient, O reader. We shall soon see how and by what path the infallible power of the master's will made Narendra reach the goal. He said the book was left unfinished. No, in this chapter itself we are showing the master, however, depended as ever on the universal mother law. That means this is necessary, that is necessary. Master is not thinking of that. He knows that it is a divine play, so it depends upon the divine only. We have been so far speaking of what the devotees were doing for the service of the master. The question may now be asked conveniently, did the master not depend on the devotees for everything without thinking about himself at all? Can we expect such indifference on the part of the master who we saw at Dakshineshwar kept a keen eye on the small daily affairs of all concerned and on the worldly and spiritual conditions of each devotee on the one hand and was having worldly and spiritual condition of each devotee on one hand and was having at the same time continual immediate experiences of the truth beyond the Vedas and the Vedantas on the other. So, he is immersed in spirituality and yet caring for every small and big thing not only in his life but in the lives of all the devotees. So, how he can become indifferent now? It has to be said in reply that he depended wholly and solely, even now as before, on the mother of the universe and had his eyes steadfastly fixed on her alone. So he was doing this, he was doing that as holy mother's embodiment previously also. From whom he expected all aid and that whatever service and amount in amount and kind we, he accepted from each devotee he had known beforehand was so ordained by the Divine Mother herself and for their own good. So if they are financially helping, it is for their own good. The more we proceed to tell the story of the Master's life, the more shall we be acquainted with this important fact which follows. How the Master would make necessary changes in the arrangement. So, if the devotees are planning this and that, if that is not according to the divine will, Master would intervene and adjust, just as he was doing previously. Again, he used to undo the arrangements made by the devotees, but not to his liking, not to spiritual welfare of all. Sometimes with their knowledge and sometimes without it. When he knew, they would feel pain thereby. So if he changes, they may feel pain. So without their knowledge changing. And which can be done suitably with their knowledge. 
He, for example, called Balaram to him at the time of his coming to Calcutta, Shampukur itself, for treatment and said, Look here, it is quite against my liking that people should arrange my daily meals by subscription. So, daily meals should not be by subscription. For God. For I have never lived so. You may ask how I was doing so at the Kali temple at the Kshineshwar, in as much as the authorities of the temple were all living separately. So jointly they were paying for me and were jointly carrying on the worship of the temple and therefore they might be said to have maintained me by subscription. In reply it may be said that I had not to maintain myself by subscription. For it has been arranged ever since the time of Rasmani that the monthly pay of seven rupees I used to get when I performed the worship should be given to me together with the prasad of the deities as long as I lived there. So eating is from the prasad. Additional requirement is from seven rupees. It may therefore be said that I lived in a way on a pension there. Master used to pronounce pension as pencil. I pencil So please pay personally the expenses for my food as long as I am outside the Kineshka. He is Rasadar Balram. So Thakur is telling you. The outside the Kineshka for treatment. So Balram. Thus again, when the garden house at Kashipur was hired for him, he came to know that the monthly rent of that house was a big amount, namely 80 rupees, and was wondering how his devotees were to maintain their big families, and many with some difficulty could possibly bear the expense. He at last called to him Surendra his devotee, a superintendent of the Dost Company, and said, Look here, Surendra, they are all petty clerks or so and have to maintain their family with difficulty. How can they raise so much money by subscription? Therefore, please pay the whole amount of the rent yourself. Surendra folded his hands and gladly agreed, saying, as your command. Actually, afterward, the Varanagar mat, that also Surendra himself had made the rent. Continuation. One day the master was telling us that owing to weakness, it would soon be difficult for him to go out for answering calls of nature. The young devotee Latu felt pain to hear those words of the master on that occasion. He made him as well as a smile, even in that state of sorrow, when with folded hands he chimed in sweet broken Bengali. Sir, here I am, your sweeper. Broken Bengali, he am your master, Rajya Chi. Master, because master. Jagya Moshay, I am your master, Rajya Chi. It is explained here. Swami Abhutananda, Name Aduna. Bhakta Sangha Suparichita. Well known now as Swami Adhutananda. He was a native of the district of Chapra, Bihar. Although he could understand Bengali, there were various peculiarities when he spoke that language because he was from Bihar, which were very sweet to hear, like the language of a boy, small boy. Thus did the master make things. This is indirect. He said, we will do. He said, I will do. Thus did the master make things convenient for the devotees by introducing appropriate rearrangements of his service. How the circle of his would-be monk devotees was formed and how it grew in love and service. So, we shall take it up on Monday and
we may be able to complete the fifth part on Monday or Tuesday and then we go back to the second part of the first volume, Sri Ramakrishna Sadhak Bhav, which is very, very important from our sadhana point of view. Om Sarva Dharma Sthapakastvam Sarva Dharma Swarupakaha Acharya Nam Acharyo Ramakrishnaya Te Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu. Thank you.